I'm Jen Mellon. Welcome to Come Home. Well, you know, I love hanging out with women of God, especially powerful women of God. So today we have a beautiful treat. Um, it's called Sandy Cubed or Sandy Times Two. And so we have Sandy McGuire, who's a regular and just a powerful woman of God. And then we have Sandy Jenkins, who God uses her incredibly for prophetic intercession and dream interpretation. So we are going just to have a heart to heart sisters chat today. And you know, one thing I love, the, the wisest man who ever lived, our wonderful friend, King Solomon wrote in Ecclesiastes 4, the one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves, but a three cord strand is not easily broken. So today there's three of us and the Trinity's three and we're gonna be ministering something so sweet and so powerful. So make sure you stay, grab your coffee, yummy, 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 heaven in a cup. Um, liquid heaven in a cup, uh, that's coffee, and uh, tell someone to join us today. Now, there are times in our life where we have to really search for a blessing or we have to search for something that's right, but some things are so obvious and right under our nose, and this is one of them. Let's go check it out. Now, I know this is religious programming, but I need to tell you one of my favorite songs. It's old school rap song, and it goes like this. And don't judge me because I'm not a singer, but friends, how many of us have them? Friends. Okay, so the reason why I'm singing that is because friends, more importantly, sisters, not just your birth blood sisters, but your girlfriends, your tribe, your, your posse. And I like that word posse because back in the day, when you heard the word posse, you knew that the posse was a group of armed men with guns and they were coming to get the job done. They didn't play the posse. They were like the cavalry coming in to save the day. I want you to think about your friends, your posse, your tribe, your girlfriends, your ride or dies, whatever you want to call them how important and how vitally needed they are in your life. Evaluate the person that you have right now. You can actually pull up your cell phone and look at the last five individuals that you have. Now, did you send them to voicemail? <laughs> did you send them to delete? Or did you answer the phone call? Reason why I say that is because that's how you really try to evaluate who is in your life because there are those individuals who suck the energy and the life from your body. But then there are those who pour into you, who breathe a life into you when your life is slowly draining from your body. I have five besties, five. And all of them have been in my life for years, some since high school, and some over the last 20, 21 years actually. And so I want you to understand the power of a posse, the power of sisterhood. There are so many times that we see reality shows where they're calling them names, they're pulling hair, they're backstabbing and biting. That's not who we are. God did not create us to be that way. He created us to be nurturers, to love on each other, to be there to support. That's the value of a sisterhood, of a vibe, of a tribe, of a posse. Think about those individuals. Everyone can't sit on the front seat of your story. No, you cannot. Some of them have to ride in the back seat. Some they have to sit on the curb, right? <laughs> because they can't even come along because you recognize the power that they bring to your atmosphere. So think about your friends. How many do you have? You don't need a hundred. You may need only just one. That one woman or girlfriend, and it could be a guy for that matter. Someone who you know you can trust with your life. You can leave a Gucci handbag with 
credit cards in there and say, I'll be back in 10 years. And in those 10 years when you return, that Gucci handbag and those credit cards are still there waiting for you because of that trust that you built with that person. That's the trust that God gives to us. He trusts us with what he is, what we trust him with his word. And he's honoring, thinking that we are going to honor him with our trust as well. So think about those individuals that you have in your life, the value that they bring. Do they pour into you or do they pull from you? Either one will determine who is going to sit on the front seat of your story. That is just one reason why posse is so important to me. My posse, I could not live without them. They got me through the dark times, the rough times, even in those joyous times, they are right there saying, we got you girl, you got this, we're here for you. Find more at my book, the CecilyWilson.com. God bless. Well, as my friend Gail Ross would say, now that's a hallelujah. <laughs> Wasn't that a great segment? Well, I'm really uh, thrilled because I have two Sandys with me, to my left and to my right. In fact, those who know them and who have been recipients of their love and their ministry call them the twin engines. And I'm sitting in between them, so I don't know what that makes me, but it's fun. Listen, these are women that are powerful ministers, incredible intercessors. They are kind, they are integrous, and they're sensitive, they're nurturing, and I, they are Jesus lovers. And so, of course, um, it's great to have them here today. And I just really want to be quiet and let them just <laughs> go and flow. But what we want to talk about today is we want to kind of continue a discussion that we started on dream interpretation. Because many of us as believers have dreams, but we don't really know how to interpret them, unpack them, or get understanding. So sometimes we just tuck them away. Well, today we are going to have a very open discussion and we're going to talk about the ways that God has used dreams in both of their lives. Um, so welcome Sandy McGuire from Here Comes Joy. Thank you. And welcome Sandy Jenkins, an incredible <laughs> minister that we've had on. So guys, let's talk about dreams. <laughs> <laughs> Most definitely. Thank you, Jen. It is such an honor to be here today. I, well, you and Sandy have really dived into this subject and I've watched your lives and thought, oh, I never thought of it that way. Oh, wow. <laughs> and you know, and, and anytime I get new revelation, I get excited. And so I want you guys to kind of just chit chat the way that you do on lives. And maybe a great place to start is first of all, why don't you just tell everyone how you started getting into this world that God said, okay, this is what I need you to do for me, daughter. Okay. Well, I dreamed for years and years and years. Even as a child, I remember dreaming or just having a really vivid imagination. And that's something to cultivate in children when they have a vivid imagination is they're really probably called to be a seer and they're going to be a dreamer. Um, but I never had understanding of dreams, of visions, or anything like that until I went to a conference and then some um, training after that at a church in Maryland. And so after that, God put clothes on everything, like on the bones that I already had there. So it was a real eye-opener for me. That's awesome. You had a dream last week. And so we said we're going to just throw it on yes. Sandy and, and let her help us. I sure did. Yeah. Thank you, Jen. So a few nights before coming to Tampa, I had a dream. The dream was, and I'm just gently going to read it from my phone, that we were invited to this incredible restaurant. It was a restaurant that, that you know, you hear about, but hard, hardly anyone ever gets to go. It's the type of restaurant that people fly all over the world to come to. And in that dream, I had an auntie who was kind of sitting there with us, and I had a friend who brought us to this beautiful restaurant. That part of the dream has already come true, and I'll let Jen Mallon tell about that and then tell the second part of the dream. Okay, so that you had that dream, and then we went and had the, the honor of interviewing a legend, Reverend Alveda King, 
And so I think she was the one who brought us to the five star restaurant, which was the River Church. And it's, it's, first of all, we ate natural food with, you know, a world renowned chef, but then we also ate spiritual food. Yes. And people oh, do fly from all over the world to come eat. Um, uh, eat spiritually from this banquet table of the Lord. So that part, we, yes. we saw it fulfilled almost immediately. Absolutely. And one part of that is, as you know, Rodney Howard Brown, when he prays for someone, most of the time you end up on the floor. The spiritual food, Jen and I both were standing <laughs> next to each other. He came to pray for us, didn't even touch us, and we were laid out on the floor. So yes, we certainly did eat yes. from some incredible gourmet food. <laughs> yes, it was wonderful, <laughs> and we both needed it. Yes, we did. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's ask Sandy about the part that we haven't, we don't really know yet. Okay. okay. So what part is that? So the second part of that dream was, that I was with Jen Mellon, I knew it was you, had a beautiful brand new pair of shoes and they were sparkly, they were shiny and handed those shoes to you. And then Jen, in the dream, you were in school being trained for a very specific assignment. Mm -hmm. And lastly, you had some really special, in the dream it was called hair glue, I recognized <laughs> hair goo, I recognized it as hair gel. And so you were putting it in your hair and it looked lovely and you gave it to me and said, here's some hair goo. And so I was putting it in my hair. We were just having a blast. That was the end of the dream. Okay. So now we <laughs> submit that to you because you're so okay. gifted and anointed. And so yes. what do you think that means? Well, I, I love this dream. I think it's beautiful. And also the first part, look at the layers of that first part, that there was natural food and then there was spiritual food. That's how dreams are. There are layers to the dreams. Mm -hmm. So Sandy was giving you a beautiful new sparkly pair of shoes. So there is a new walk, a new assignment, mm -hmm. something new coming for you. And there was a school, is that correct? That, that's right, that Jen was in school learning. Uh, she was training for a very specific brand new assignment. Yeah, that, that indicative of the new shoes. There is a wow. new walk coming your way, something new coming your way, and God is gonna train you up in it because he won't let you just, he just won't throw you out there and let you fall. He's yeah. gonna train you up to do this new thing. Isn't that beautiful? Wow. And your hair is your covering. Um, and hair in a dream, a lot of times long hair is glory. Mm. It's the glory of God. Mm. So you yes. had something that it, it was enhancing the glory of God. So this new walk, this new assignment is the way I see it is something that the glory of God is gonna shine through and that's gonna be something that you can even share with your friends. Wow. So isn't that beautiful? That is. Much more than we got out of that. Oh, dream. Absolutely. <laughs> well, I'm glad we were together and we are both putting it in our hair and that, yeah. you know, I, I'm so hungry just for the glory of God, even in this show, just to release mm -hmm. uh, the glory. Uh, so many need it after Amen. so long being locked down and unable to move about and so mm -hmm. Amen. now Joseph was a dreamer and and Joseph uh, gave prophetic interpretation in fact his ability to interpret a dream got him promoted mm -hmm. all the way That's up good. to the second in command and it wasn't his strength his skill his wisdom his knowledge you know any of that his pedigree it was that he could accurately interpret mm -hmm. a dream mm -hmm. so i know god's used you in in giving you prophetic dreams i know god has given you prophetic dreams so talk about some something that might stand out as far as the political climate the cultural sure. climate most definitely yes I was sent into to work in government in 2017, and prior to that, about, oh gosh, 2015, I'd have dreams that I was in the White House, never knowing that I'd actually get to the White House. But that began a journey of ministry by, number one, honoring dreams when God gave a dream saying, you know what? I need to pay attention to this. But one very specific dream that I'll mention that actually did come to pass, and maybe this is good for, uh, for learning, kind of like a lesson learned here, because it was definitely a lesson for me. In 2018, I had a dream that President Trump was assassinated. Hmm. He was assassinated 
prematurely, if that makes any sense, in dreams, it's the context and it's what, it's what you know to be true in the dreams. So I knew he was assassinated prematurely and they were, the people who assassinated him were trying to get rid of him quickly. Mm -hmm. They were trying to dispose of him even before having a funeral. It was so mm -hmm. sad, everyone was devastated. And at the time, I misunderstood that dream as an intercessor, I thought, that President Trump was going to be assassinated. So when I interceded, it was praying and inter for a while, it was praying and interceding that he wouldn't become assassinated. And as we all know, that was definitely something something to be concerned about. Yes. Mm -hmm. So now five years later, uh, what do you think that that symbol symbolic assassination attempt represented? Well. After a couple of years of experience in dreams, because later on I had more dreams of people dying, and what happened is they actually, the friendship ended, their assignment in my life ended. Um, whatever that was specific to them in my life, it ended. And so now I understand that President Trump's assignment from heaven ended prematurely and was assassinated. Not him, but the assignment. That's interesting. Yeah, and we should ask our expert. Yeah, I was just gonna say, <laughs> now we're gonna throw it to you as just someone that you're you're in this world all the time. God just has you, you know, giving gold and nuggets and understanding. Mm -hmm. So what does the what does death mean to you in a dream? Um, to me in a dream, it could mean natural death. I mean we have to know what God is saying to us. Because like Sandy, because we're friends and we know each other. Her dreams, a lot of times, they're very literal. Yes. So we walk through things sometimes just to make sure it's not literal. Yes. Um, but this one with President Trump, they tried to impeach, or they actually impeached him. You know, he never left Pretty office. Bad. So he was not assassinated, but there was an attempt at assassination of his character, of his assignment from heaven. Yeah. And so we do know, um, depending on how we, we believe about the political climate, you know, um, we do know that his assignment was ended early. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, I God mean, that's... More. He does more. have more. And I had a dream that, that kind of dovetails on that, if you want me to share. I do. Um, that was, it was so intense when I had it. I dreamed that it was nighttime. There was a little boy out in the field. And it was dark, and it was starting to storm and lightning. And Donald Trump and the little boy was so scared and he was crouching down on the grass and Donald Trump came out and he laid over top of the little boy and he in the dream I heard he was overshadowing the little boy and in the dream I shouted to him and I said but you're gonna get struck the lightning's gonna hit you he said it's okay I'll take the hit but I have to make sure he's okay Jeez. and so in the dream I was asking the Lord about that the little boy is the United States because we're not a very old nation. We're not. Right. And he took the hit politically oh. in order to save this nation. And then another part of the dream, because I'll have multiple scenes in a dream, just like that dream that, that you all shared, that I was in my dining room and it was full of beautiful antiques and there was a china cabinet. And do you remember this? Oh, yes. <laughs> and there was a china cabinet and a lady came in and we were all just really drunk in the glory. <laughs> and I was overseeing this glory party and she got so uh, drunk, if you will, that she just leaned up against this china cabinet and it concerned me. So I ran over and I put my hand behind the cabinet so that it wouldn't fall. And I realized, oh, there's a wall behind there. That wall is going to stabilize that cabinet. Mm -hmm. And in the dream, this lady, I kept saying, where's your husband? Where, where's your husband? And we were waiting for her husband to come, but he never showed up. Well, he was a beautiful worshiper, wrote worship music and everything. Then all of a sudden I see another area, there's a hallway, and Donald Trump is standing at the end of the hallway, and there's the glory of God, a light shining on him and he is waiting to come back and he starts walking up the hall and he wasn't quite into the kitchen yet or into that dining room. And I said, Lord, what, what is this about? And he, the Lord was saying that he is on his way back, but he's not quite here yet. He says, meanwhile, enjoy my glory Ooh. because he is pouring out his spirit on all flesh, right? Yeah. And 
I said, okay, what about this china cabinet where we feel like we're not very stable with the country of China? The Lord says, I've got it. I have it. And a time marker in this dream was we were waiting for this lady's husband to come. And in reality, about four months later, he passed away at his keyboard worshiping. He just passed away. Like he was just done here. He wasn't sick. There was nothing wrong with him. Wow. So he just graduated to heaven. He just chose to go to heaven (laughs) while he was worshiping the Lord. Wow. So there is so much reality in our dreams that how can we not take them seriously? It's true. And I love how you teach to write our dreams down, yes. you know, to date our dreams and, you know, to, to, to title our dreams. Mm-hmm. You taught that in a previous interview and, and that really is important. Um, there's two questions and I'll let either one of you answer. <laughs> so here's two, hopefully we'll get to both. One is, I would like either one of you to share about a time that you got freedom or deliverance in your dream, that you, mm. you woke up and you knew I just got free from God. God did it in my dream. The other question is recurring dreams because there, uh, there is one recurring dream that I ha- I've had since my childhood. And you know what? Many times I've said, Lord, what does that mean? I've gotten different thoughts. But you know, how, how do you um, interpret and explain recurring dreams? Okay. Do you want, I know the freedom and deliverance, Sandy, you shared that recently on one of our broadcasts and it was really good. Okay, um, I, again, you know, I dreamed for many years and this was probably, I guess in the late 80s, I was really young. <laughs> but You're an issue. Young. You're I really young. Am. You're I am. <laughs> That's true. Um, there was something I had dealt with, you know, basically all of my life as a child and all that. And I woke up in the middle of the night and I had been in a dream and the Lord took me into heaven and I was laying right in front of the throne room or in the front of the throne of God and I just laid there and just his presence saturated me Uh and it it could make me cry right now. It's so real. It's so vivid and it was so real that I woke up in the middle of the dream and this is one of those things that when you look in the dream you keep looking and so I knew that deliverance was complete I was totally delivered of that issue and I heard the Lord say okay it's time to go back and I said please don't make me go back there please don't make me go back there and I felt like I was in an elevator and I just just as fast as, as I got there I was in my bed and my eyes were wide open and to this day, and it's been 30-something years, I have not dealt with that issue again. Oh, praise wow. God. God's yes. so sweet. He's <laughs> he is. so sweet. And I do feel like there's someone watching that you have struggled with something, a belief system and a mindset mm. and just an addiction, an, an mm. emotional issue. And God's going to give you a dream, and He is going to set yes. you free. He's going to do for you in your sleep what has not happened in the natural mm. yet. And so whoever that's for, just receive that. Mm. So we only have like four minutes left. Yes. And so I want you both to have the opportunity yeah. to minister. Do you want to speak to the recurring dream um, sure. or before we switch into ministry mode? Sure, yeah. When I was young, I had a recurring dream of a man coming into the hallway and chasing me. It was a very dark circumstance. Um, I was afraid. I was kind of cowered in the corner. And I had it for many years until I became older and started to engage in deliverance. And I believe that the Lord was showing me that this was, the location's important in a dream too. This was in a house where I was young. Uh, My family was, you know, there very broken at the time. And so um, I believe the Lord was showing me that the enemy had come through bloodline, through generational curses and such, and was coming after me to shut down my purpose because I didn't know the Lord. I didn't know the truth. I didn't know the gospel. I was cowering in a corner afraid. That dream quit happening. It broke the day I stepped forward to get deliverance. I joined a program called Redeeming the Time and began to get healed of generational curses. That dream quit happening. I believe the Lord was giving that dream to show me exactly what was going on. The neat thing is those, the 
gifts happen even though we don't understand what's happening. So if, if you're having a dream and it's whatever it is, you don't understand it, it's recurring or whatnot, do not ignore the dream. Had I, you know, the moment I became an adult, had I pursued that dream and pursued deliverance and healing, uh, I would have gotten free earlier. So if you don't understand a dream, seek it out, search it out, find someone like a Sandy Jenkins. There are plenty of dream books. We can probably mention one today here too. Do not ignore the word of the Lord. Dreams are God speaking to you. They are, they are. He loves us so much. Yeah. Sandy, mention a book uh, that they okay. could go to and then would you just pray and awaken understanding, awaken revelation, okay. awaken people to dream again. Okay. Um, there is a. There are several really good dream interpretation yeah. books. Um, one is The Divinity Code by Adrian Beal. Beal and Adam Thompson. And Barbie Breathitt has really yes. good um, resources out there. There's Ira Milligan has Understanding the Dreams You Dream. There are just so many resources that um, there's no shortage. Okay. Awesome. So let me just say a word of prayer yes. and just Father, I just awaken the dream yes. life in the people who are listening today. You, Father, I thank you for their spirit. Lord, yes. I just speak mm -hmm. to their spirit to come alive yes. in the name of Jesus, to awaken. Yes. And Father, that they will begin to, to dream, that they will begin to see into the spirit realm. And Father, that you would give them dreams in the natural and in the spirit. Yes. Father, they would learn how to interpret dreams. And Father, that they would be able to minister to people around them. And I really see people um, being able to minister to their family by learning how to interpret their dreams. God is about to set some families free yes. in Jesus' yes. name. Yes. Glory. Hallelujah. Yeah. Glory. Glory. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. And you know, I love how you talked about being in the home, the house represented yes. a familiar spirit or bloodline and right. family. That's, that was really interesting. Mm -hmm. Listen, God, God's so faithful, yes. and I encourage you to seek out. Uh, you can find Sandy McGuire on Here Comes Joy. You can find Sandy Jenkins on lots of social media. They do things together to bring guidance <laughs> and understanding. And listen, God cares about every part of your life. He cares yes. about your dreams. He gave you dreams to bring you yes. back to his heart, to bring you back to the Father's home, mm -hmm. to bring you back to a place in Jesus, to warn you, to encourage mm -hmm. you, and to set you free. And so what a beautiful program. You are a beautiful child of God. He is with you, and I pray that you start dreaming yes. and dreaming again and having prophetic dreams from heaven. Mm -hmm. My name is Jen Mallon. I have been so blessed to have these two <laughs> yes. beauties with me today. Mm -hmm. And we will see you tomorrow on Come Home.